Real Life presents the Jack Hibbs Podcast with intention and boldness to proclaim truth, equip the saints, and impact our culture. Today, if this podcast lifts you up and encourages you to live a more fulfilled life in Christ, then make sure you leave us one of those five-star ratings. To us, that's like saying amen or yes. Then that rating will encourage others to listen. Now open your hearts to what God's Word has to say to you. Here is Jack Hibbs. Hey, welcome to this episode of Real Life. And we have something truly today that I believe that if you are willing to listen and to spread the word uh, regarding what you're about to hear to someone you know in the public school system, and you might be saying, well, that's everybody. Well, that may be true. So spread the word. Here's the deal. Today, I have with me Jessica Tapia, and she is a public school teacher. For six years, she's been a public school teacher. Uh, She has her master's degree in education. She has um, uh, experienced um, a challenging upbringing, to say the least. She is a woman that I would think people would want to emulate and get behind and support because she's a success story. She has uh, taken what we would say in biblical terms, ashes, and has turned them into beauty. Her life matters. Uh, Her faith matters. She's a woman of faith, and she has taken a stand, and she's done that in the public school system. But that has become unacceptable. And so she has recently lost her job as a public school teacher for her faith in California. But her story is not limited to California. This is happening in school districts all across the United States. So you need to tune in, you need to give extra attention because I do believe that you're going to derive courage from her testimony and you might even get um, some direction as to what you should do, mom and dad, or what you should do, principal or teacher, regarding the dynamics of what's happening with this assault on our public school system. So Jessica, welcome. Thank you. It's an honor to have you here. And so just tell us about yourself. I mean, I I, I mentioned a few things, but let us know who you are and we'll talk about what's happening and then um, really, frankly, what you're going to be doing about it. Yes. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I told my husband immediately um, after I was fired and I, I put a little post out on my Instagram to start sharing with the world. And then I started receiving the media requests and I looked at him and I was like, the first thing I want to do is talk to my pastor. (laughs) Um, So I've done a few other um, interviews, but I'm so happy to finally be sitting with you. Um, So who I am, I'm obviously a follower of Christ. I'm a wife and a mother of three. Um, I went to California Baptist University, um, got a couple degrees there, my teaching credential, which is so interesting to me looking back now that I, I went to a private Christian college yeah. to receive my teaching credential. And then now I'm in this position where as a Christian public school teacher, I've been removed from my position for standing in in the truth of, of the Lord and of the Bible. So that's interesting to me, but um, everything for a reason. I'm, mm. I, I truly have peace, even though this is like a lot of people look at this and they're so sorry for me. And I, I want to tell people, don't be. Um, I really believe that like God is doing something with this. And I'm not sorry. I don't want you to be sorry. I want you to just come alongside me and so many have and just, you know, stand up and together, like, let's make change because we all see and know that it needs to happen. Um, we truly are the majority. We just can't be silent anymore. Isn't that so true? So, so true. So again, how long have you been a teacher? So six years and and this whole thing went down at the very end of my six year of teaching, literally two days before summer vacation. So tell us about, um, tell us about what, what, I guess what I'm asking, what's the day in the life of a public school teacher? Walk us through that for those of us who don't know, what will I encounter um, as a public school teacher uh, for the year, what am I going to be facing, um, in, in the system? So I, um, this, this past year I had 
just moved to the high school level. I actually had moved to the high school that I attended and that I met my husband at um, and the high school where I was very, very influenced by my coaches. Um, one of my coaches actually invited me to her Bible study. She is now my mother-in-law. Oh um, my So goodness. a lot of history there. Yeah. It was incredible to go back. Um, and hopefully, you know, have that same influence on, on my students that my coaches and teachers had on me. And, um, but it's different. It was different going back, um, just dark and heavy. It's one of those things where you just walk on campus and you feel the culture. As a and Christian, you can feel, I yes. mean, we, as believers, we know that even yes. walking into a, a store or a city, mm -hmm. Or wherever you can sense that there's something up. Right. And so that's the the sense. But um, to be more, I guess, descriptive, just you you compare to what you know and what you've been through. So when I was there as, you know, a student, um, for example, you know, dress code, you know, a girl wouldn't dare to wear a spaghetti strap. But now I'm walking around and, and there's students in what look to be bras. Actually... Yes, we've seen that, mm -hmm. and you are correct. And and, it's, and it seems that no one's saying anything, so then you don't feel that you can say anything, and we're all just going along with it, and it's just getting worse. Um, so it was definitely not what I... Things have gotten to a point, I think, culturally and morally, mm -hmm. um, at least speaking for the school that I was at um, to where I didn't feel like I could even teach anymore. I didn't feel like the students were even wanting me to teach or open to me teaching. Um, they were just like in their own world. Um, so they would, so uh, look, I mean, I'm old enough to be your, your dad. When I was in school, attention was demanded. If you didn't pay attention, you paid the price. Uh, you learned or you repeated a, a class until you got it right. You weren't going to advance to the next grade until you until you got it down. There was no just go with the flow thing. Uh, my goodness, back in my day, we actually got spanked in school. Um, and mm -hmm. so uh, what I'm saying is this. Um, people, well, how could that happen? That's terrible. I'm not going to get into that part of it. I'm not sure at the time I agreed with it. <laughs> But the point was, um, we were producing people who were way smarter and disciplined. Disciplined, yes. In all areas, Discipline. by the way. Mm -hmm. It's not just, it's not just, can you read the book? It's, do you have, uh, over the school year, did you develop character? So um, it's my understanding that in the public school system, there's a, a great level of, of disrespect. I don't have to, I don't need to do this. Exactly. What's this for? You're, you, you know, who are you to tell me? Yeah. Um, and yeah, the, the immorality, um, the, the attack that has been levied against you, walk us through that. Why, why did they have an issue and what have they said to you? How did they communicate that to you? Yeah. So it all started, um, like I said, literally a couple days before summer break, um, of last year. So at the end of May of last year, I noticed that students had found me on social media because I was getting some really awful comments and it didn't normally get comments like from, that. From students or from who you don't know? I with? didn't know at first when I read the comments. I and this was is like, your private page? It's my Instagram page. I had recently oh. made it public um, to share about a business that I had started and yeah, to it's share yours. with. It's not yes. the schools. No, it, do, it doesn't even say that I'm a teacher on there. It doesn't say where I teach. It's uh. my private, personal, where I share my beliefs, my opinions, and my Christian religion. Right on. Um, students decided to look me up for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe they were looking me up to see my kids that I talk about, to see my horse that I talk about. I don't know. But they found something they didn't like. Um, specifically, it was a video. I was out shopping one day and just seeing all of the, the pride clothing. And right. this time I was very shocked to find that they're now making this stuff for toddlers and babies, yes, right. like 12 month. Yeah. Pro and so I was sharing that, you know, bringing awareness of that to, to other moms. 
And um, specifically, like in my caption said, I, I think this is wrong. A three-year-old cannot wrap their mind around what pride right. is. Why All. are we making... Yep. Completely just, normal comments because this is America and you have your First Amendment right. Just sharing my opinion. To share your... Just sharing my opinion. And well, the right students found that um, and they airdropped that video across campus and, of course, made it into a phobic thing yeah. and made it into a hate thing. Um, and I was just blocking and deleting as I was receiving comments from students because I don't, you know, I'm a teacher. I, I don't want them on my page right. and they shouldn't be there. Um, and I didn't want any trouble. Well, uh, after I had deleted one of the comments, they came back and said, too late, we've sent this into the district. So and this so is intimidation and bullying now. So the uh, the woke world that says bullying is terrible, they're masters at bullying. And the woke world that says, uh, don't criticize me, you have to accept me. They can't, they can't accept anybody right. that's right. outside of their lane. Exactly. And their lane is uh, very, very petite or very narrow. Um, and I'll just throw this in there. It's because they're extremely fragile. Mm -hmm. um, they bend, they break when they bend. They, they have no ability to cope. And eventually they're going to have to go into the real world, which they will not make it. They, mm -hmm. they will fail because they haven't learned how to debate. They haven't learned how to cope. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they are the same equivalency to what you used to see at Toys R Us when they were in business of a, of a three-year-old or a five-year-old screaming and slapping their mother in the toy aisle because they wanted that toy and mommy said no. And so um, the remarkable thing is that you're exercising your First Amendment constitutional rights mm -hmm. and everything about what you're doing is private, but um, they went and made it um, a, a public thing in the sense that you can't do this. How dare you? Right. As a as a teacher, I should not have stated my opinions. Isn't that amazing? So as a te on your private page, you are a mom. You are a an equestrian a gal with the horse and you're living your life. And they they insert what they're imposing upon you then is these are the rules of the school or the administration. And we're imposing that upon your your private social media mm -hmm. platform. 24 seven, not, you know, not just when you're at work, we are holding you to this at all times if you're going to be a teacher. So do other teachers know this is going on? Yes. Yes, they are. They're coming aware of it because of my story getting out. Yeah. Um, Good. So after um, those videos and also several posts, this is what this is what really confirmed that this is spiritual warfare for me. Um, totally facing spiritual warfare like I've never faced it before, at least to my recognition, was when I was brought into the school district for the first meeting and they presented me with what students had found, um, the various things on social media they sent into the district. Um, at the back of this packet of papers, which had several allegations, so essentially students found things they didn't like on my social media and then used those to craft allegations against me as a teacher. A couple of them being that I broadcast sermons to my classes. And I just looked at the district personnel and I was like, I'm going to be so honest with you. This is the only thing I can think of that uh, this allegation would be made upon. I'm a PE teacher on Mondays. We go to the track and they have a mile to do. And that's the one day I let them listen to a podcast or music of their choosing. And I do the same, but I don't put in headphones like they do because I need to be vigilant. Oh, that's right. But I put on. Oh, no. <laughs> or <laughs> worship music or, you know, something of my choosing. <laughs> You don't want to hear what they put on, the yeah, students. Uh, exactly. And it's just loud enough in my pocket. It's not blaring. It's not being broadcast. It's just loud enough so I can hear it as I walk around yeah, and watch my no students. Problem. And so interesting, too, because I've had several students as they walk by comment like, oh, I love that song. Or what mm. church do you go to? And it's, you know, kind of been great to strike up mm. conversation with some of my students. But then all of a sudden... The students found my social media and found my other opinions and beliefs and went to work crafting allegations against me. Yeah. And um, anyways, what I was starting to get at, at the back of that packet was printouts of screenshots the students sent into the district. 
several of them were Bible verses I posted on my Instagram. And I'm just thinking, are, it's a are they really, really huh? using <laughs> Bible verses to back like these allegations against me? Yeah, because the Bible is so dangerous and evil, you know. Yes, yes. And how could we have such a thing? You know, it's amazing to me what you're describing. And it's sad because when I'm going to say it, the young the, the young people are not going to understand what I'm going to say because they've never been taught. Is you are literally describing these kids as being brown shirts. These are the brown shirts of Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime. Brown shirts were children who were taught by the system to turn people in. Wow. They're called brown shirts. Uh, so I'm just going to call them brown shirts. Normally, these kids would normally be more concerned about their acne or their that hair. That was me. That was me. Or mm -hmm. um, are they going to pass? Mm -hmm. are they are they. Am I going to make the team? Mm -hmm. What is me. really bizarre to what you're saying is these are kids yes. who are little police officers, mm -hmm. exactly. which makes them brown shirts. That I. I can't imagine that happening unless what happened to the brown shirts of the 40s, 1940s, they were groomed by adults. Mm -hmm. They were told, so to speak, I'm exaggerating right now, but we'll give you a donut or we'll give you a candy or a piece of chocolate if you tell us, if you hear people saying these things. Mm -hmm. And they turn people in. And so it's amazing because we're living in this this moment. Mm -hmm. So the only way to stop this, I, I, you've probably seen this on, on the, on the PE field or in the classrooms, but the only way to stop what we're talking about is for good people to punch back. And you say, I can't believe a pastor just said that. Well, you need to get used to it because in first Corinthians, uh, 10, six, um, I, I'm sorry, second Corinthians 10, six, the Bible tells us that by our obedience to Christ, we punish disobedience, right. which means we're to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And if that right thing causes evil to be exposed, mm -hmm. that's the whole point. Yes. So what, what, I'm, what I want to say about Jessica is that she's courageous, she's strong, she knows not only her biblical calling, she's exposing evil, but she's also um, exercising her First Amendment rights. In America, she has that right to do exactly what she's doing. Technically, technically, those brown shirt little punks do not have the right to do what they're doing. They've been groomed by a social structure uh, that is a form of communalism, communism. And that's what's happening. And so teachers, you need to stand up. You need to do what Jessica's doing. In fact, Jessica, what are you doing? Yes. So after that first meeting that I kind of described with the allegations and the Bible verse printouts and, and all of that, um, I responded to all of those vocally. And then they took some time to process what I um, voiced based on the allegations and then essentially decided what they were going to do with me, called me in for a second meeting and basically told me I'm lucky to still have a job. What I had done was so serious and wrong. Okay, that's intimidation, but keep going. And it was, it felt really awful to hear that from these district personnel because before all this, they respected me. They adored me. I've done so much for the district. I, they, I was a student there, straight A student there, athlete lifeguard, sub, coach, all the things. But because of this one finding, it's, it was like I saw their whole mm. vision of me just flip. And, and it's like a mask switched on their... Yeah, and it was instantly like, even if you are calling me back, I don't, I wouldn't even feel comfortable coming back. You clearly like don't like me anymore. Yeah, um, it's not... So... Well, I'm sorry to put words in your mouth, but... Um, if I were your attorney, for example, I would say something to the effect of if they invited you back, they they previously already made it clear that your views are not welcome. Mm -hmm. And what we are as human beings is our views. Mm -hmm. And so the environment is not a free environment. Hi, Jessica. Welcome back. But you're not free. Right. 
Uh, hi, welcome back. But you cannot express your personal views yes. and you cannot be an American. You cannot exercise the Constitution mm -hmm. and you've got to be woke mm -hmm. uh, if you want to keep your job. So all of these things are actually illegal mm -hmm. for uh, that to be imposed upon you. But yes, and that's exactly what happened in the second meeting. They said I was lucky to have my job back. I was barely allowed to come back. Here are the directives you need to follow. And we're going to be watching you closely for 45 days for change of behavior. And that right away, change of behavior. I've behaved the same way for six years of teaching. I have nothing to change. So you're right not going to find any change of behavior there. Um, and then the directives were affirmation for me of what I was already feeling um, in my soul about the whole situation. So first, a directive um, that I knew, well, I can't and won't do that, is I need to refer to students by their preferred pronoun and gender. And in the meeting, I wasn't voicing to them, nope, not doing that, nope. I was just internalizing all of it yeah. um, as they spoke their directives over me for returning that Monday. Um, the second allegation was I was to refrain from speaking to students about God or the Bible. That's illegal. That really hurt my soul. Um, so I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you, but it's because I find your this is incredibly fascinating. So you are to hold to the social construct that we are inventing. You will do as we say. Mm -hmm. And you should be so lucky that we're going to be so nice to you mm -hmm. to allow you to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are going to dictate uh, your life. And um, we are going to scrub this God thing out of your life when most people don't even realize that the public school system was founded by three guys. One of them happened to have been a guy by the name of Thomas Jefferson. Benjamin Rush was, the, was another one. And I think John Adams is in there, but whoever the third guy is, is a real big hitter. And their, their founding of the public school system was based on this. There are people homeschooling their kids in colonial America, and some of them are not teaching them the Bible. So we're going to create the public school system, and the Bible will be the preeminent textbook, mm -hmm. as well as the McGuffey Reader. These will be the foundations of the public school system, because some kids are not getting a biblical worldview. Mm -hmm. That's Thomas Jefferson friends, go look that up. And now our system has divorced itself from God. Completely. And you are um, in this machine that is godless. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about what they're telling you to do, they're actually uh, doing what they claim nobody's allowed to do. And that is, you got to stay out of politics. You got to stay out of politics. What they're doing is pure politics. Mm -hmm. Okay. And their political agenda is you will submit, mm -hmm. which is actually tyrannical. And um, so you were fired. Yes. So after receiving those directives, so those were the, the two that I um, previously voiced. Those were the two instantly, like inside, I knew I'm, I'm not complying with those. And um, they also vocally in that second meeting with the presentation of directives vocally told me, that I had to lie to parents. If a student came to me with a preferred gender or pronoun, that info had to be withheld from parents for the sake of the student's privacy. And I was so taken back by that, that I, I looked at the assistant superintendent in the eyes and I said, are you asking me to lie to parents? And they said, yes, it's the law. It's for the student's the privacy. Law. So it's a subversion of parental that. authority. They told you to lie. And I said, we are talking about the well-being, information regarding the well-being of a child. And they said, yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't understand. There's some students where when their parents find out, they kick them out of the house. It's not a, first of all, that may or may not be true. I have no input on that. I have no knowledge of that. But that's not their concern. Their concern is math right? Mm -hmm, exactly. Geography. Let's leave home at home. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'm assuming now our system, and by the way, those of you, listen, you think this is a California issue? It's a national issue. Mm -hmm. Somebody just told me last night, oh, we're moving to, we're moving to uh, Tennessee. We're, we're moving to Nashville where we don't have these, we're getting out of California. We're moving to Nashville. 
And it was so bizarre because I told the guy, I said, well, that's funny. About four days ago, I just talked to somebody who moved to Nashville and they were talking about how insanely woke their school system is. Nashville. And it was worse than California. So the point is this, it's a national, this is a national battle. And by the way, we want to make this a national battle. We want Jessica to be an encouragement to you. The Bible tells us in, in Joshua chapter one, uh, God tells Joshua over and over again, in just one chapter, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid for I'm with you wherever you go. He keeps telling Joshua that. Joshua, the great first general of the Israeli forces, God has to keep telling them, be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid. Why? Because Joshua was prone to be discouraged and to be afraid. God doesn't waste his breath. And so all of you who are in the public school system, we've got to figure out unless there's maybe there's something out there right now forming, but there's got to be some form of an alliance that maybe Jessica can invent and, and take so it nationally, about, yes. right? Take it nationally to have it be like, you know, almost the, uh, the, the National School Teachers Reporting Center, where you bring your Jessica story and... Let's get these incredible uh, agencies that will represent you in court uh, for free. There's, there's uh, the Pacific Justice Institute. There's Advocates for Faith and Freedom. There's the Alliance uh, for, for Defending, Alliance Defending Freedom Fund. There's, there's uh, Liberty Council. There's so many that are waiting to hear. But listen, we're going to lose our system uh, to what I was alluding to earlier, and I didn't finish this, I guess is you're going to be bullied until you stand up to the bully. This is human psychology. A bully will push a kid around all school year long until that kid, we've all watched movies like this, haven't we? Sandlot movies like this, where the kid finally gets fed up and punches the bully in the nose. And then from that time on, the bully leaves the guy alone. Every boy knows this, by the way. Every, every first grade boy knows that you punch the bully in the nose and then the rest of the school year is fine. Well, there's a lot of people now who are school teachers and or administrators that are just nothing but overgrown bullies. And they're intimidating. You know you have a bully on your hands when they threaten and intimidate you. In our nation right now, you can punch them back by legal means. If you're a Christian, get friends praying, read your Bible, read the book of Joshua, read the book of Proverbs. At the same time, get on the phone and get a very, very strong attorney. And what you do is you do what Paul the Apostle did. You exercise your Roman rights. Paul exercised his Roman rights when he, as a Roman citizen, was attacked. He said, I appeal to Caesar. Only a Roman citizen could do that. And listen, the authorities in Caesarea, they were bound to then file documents sending Paul to Rome. They had to. That was the law. Paul used the law of the Roman Empire to advance his cause. And Paul went to Rome. And you need to do the same thing. You need to know, hey, wait a minute. I'm a school teacher. This is my life. This is my love. Um, I'm being told that I cannot have a Bible on my desk. Oh, yeah, you can. It's your constitutional right. They're threatening to sue me, or they just fired me, or they're telling me this, or they're telling me that. There needs to be some form of place for you to go to. Yes. So um, this is so vitally important. We need to, I, I'm so sorry, we need to wrap this up, but um, tell us where you're at. What are you doing now? Uh, tell us about going forward and what you hope to see happen. Yeah, so just really quick before that, the third meeting um, was after I took three months of stress leave to figure out yeah. what I was gonna do next regarding the directives. Knew in my heart and soul, I wasn't gonna comply with several of them. Do I resign or do I, as you stated, you know, stand up to the beast? Yep. And I actually, for most of the months, was planning to resign, had half of a resignation letter written, and for some reason could never get around to finishing it. And it was, I was so stressed out one day and I was telling my mother-in-law, I just, I need to finish this letter. Like I have three little ones, so I was never able to sit down and type. Um, and she just was like, Jess, there's probably a reason that you haven't been able to finish it. Just trust. 
And then maybe I, I just started praying. And then maybe a day or two after that, I had a divine appointment of a phone call with a couple in Washington that I had only connected with through Instagram, um, got very close to the wife uh, because of her faith. And they spoke over me. I really want to say prophesied right over me. Yeah. And they they gave me the answer that I was praying for, asking God, do I resign or do I vocalize to the district that I won't comply with these things? I'm ready to come back to work, but here's what I won't do. And they said, don't resign. You so sta keep standing to, up. To resign would have been to quit. Mm -hmm. And sad to yes. say, there's been a lot of really good people that I know mm -hmm. that uh, they didn't come and ask. They didn't come and get prayer. They came and told me, I quit. And I just kind of cringe when I hear that because... I love what Winston Churchill said. He said, it's always too soon to quit, <laughs> you know? And so we're so proud of you. Um, how do, is there anything that we, um, you, you, so you're going to court, yeah? Yes, we're still waiting for the right to sue letter, which was yeah. new for me. I didn't know that you had to have a right to sue, yeah. um, but we're waiting for that from EEOC. And then from there, we will begin litigating in the Riverside County Court. Um, and for now, just, you know, spreading the story far and wide. And I already see many parents, I believe, waking up to what's really happening in, in the school system. I have hundreds of messages from teachers that are either have shared they're very inspired by what I've done or they've shared with me that they were in a similar position and resigned, which makes me sad. But mm -hmm. um, And then I actually have several teachers that are going through this with me, like currently, having to make the decision. And so I'm encouraging them to stand up. Is there a, do you have a, a, a how do people reach out to you? Is, is it, I know it's all happening so fast. Are you ready for that? Do you have that? Yeah, on my Instagram is where I Can keep you, everyone up to date. Tell us. Yeah, it's, um, my Instagram name is Jess underscore Sayin. Can you spell it? So it's J-E-S-S -S underscore S-A-Y-I-N-N-N, -N -N, just Sayin. Okay, we'll make sure that that's, that appears and people get awesome. that. Um, really quick, you have been bombarded with media. Um, you, um, I'm not exactly sure when this podcast is going to drop, but probably by that time you will have been on numerous uh, news uh, and uh, radio interviews and all. But one of them will be uh, Tucker Carlson. Yes, that's set for the 27th. I believe that's Monday. 27th of February. This is huge because uh, he has the largest viewing audience. So just think about that. Millions of people are going to hear this. And I pray, I pray that out of the millions, that there's at least a million or 500,000 school teachers that are going to mm -hmm. say, you know what? Wow. I need to defend what I love. Mm -hmm. And here's the, here's the thing. When good people abandon the public square, or when good people just shut down, evil fills that void. Evil rushes in. It's just the way evil works. When light goes out, darkness comes. Have you noticed that? When you turn off your light in your room, darkness comes. Isn't it amazing when you turn the light switch on? Where does darkness, darkness go? I mean, think about it. Because light itself is a physical structure. I mean, these are photons that actually fill up a room. Where did darkness go? And by you standing, you are dispelling the darkness. And I want to talk to every Christian or at least good teacher that's out there. You don't have to be a Christian to be a good teacher. If you love the kids and you love teaching, and this is going on to you or, if it's, or it will happen to you, you need to stand. You need to stand because these are the days. Evil advances like the thug on the, on the campus who's pushing people around. And we have got to figure out, as God-honoring, Bible-believing, submitted, committed Christians, how to exercise, as Paul did, his freedoms for the cause of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so I want everyone to be praying for Jessica, please. This is a prayer request, that you would pray for her, that you would stay and uh, in tune with what's happening and, and follow. We'll do a follow-up podcast as time progresses. Um, but I just really want to just pray that your legal counsel mm -hmm. uh, is absolutely lion-hearted. Mm -hmm. Your legal counsel must be like a dog on a bone, so mm -hmm. as they say, uh, relentless. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, we pray for your legal counsel. We pray for you. 
uh, we pray for these poor kids who are being manipulated by, frankly, people that I have um, just about zero respect for. Uh, these, these people who will manipulate kids to spy and to promote their godless agenda. Uh, there should be shame written all over them. Uh, but, uh, you know, the way that we must combat this is to f stand in the truth mm -hmm. and to exercise our freedoms while we have them. And so um, uh, we're impressed. And I, I just, I'm so grateful for you. And I just know that God is going to use this. He will never waste um, the opportunity to glorify his name through a, a yielded child of his. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's who you are. We love you. We're with you. And so I am just absolutely so, so grateful. So you guys stay tuned. This has been powerful. My goodness. I just, this is <laughs> no pun intended, but this is real life. What Jessica's talking about. And, and it's, it's amazing. And so um, it, it's, it's time for you and I to live out uh, what it is that we believe in. And it is time for real life. And it's exactly what Jessica's doing. So listen, as always, we're asking you, please, you want to help us uh, keep us from getting canceled, uh, things like that. This is how it works. Um, that We need you to hit that subscribe button. We need you to do that. If you want to give us a review. Um, look, I'm going to live without you doing that. But here's the way the world works. If you hit the subscribe button or if you give us a... Uh, a review, it helps the algorithm. It, the, uh, the machines that read this stuff uh, actually move us up in this world of ours, and it's the way it is. Sorry, but it's the way that it is. So please subscribe. It's all free. Stay with us. We're going to be bringing you more and more information about not only Jessica's story, but um, just the progress of how we stand until the Lord comes back, we stand in our faith. And as always, you guys can always go to jackhibbs.com for so much more. So listen, Jessica, thank you so much. Thank you. It's an Pastor honor. Jeff. It's an honor to My have you. My honor. Thank you. God bless you. This Jack Hibbs podcast, as well as all the broadcast outreach opportunities, are listener supported. Will you consider partnering with us through a special gift? Go to jackhibbs.com to learn more and stay connected.